Obviously, one purpose is to give the parties another chance to persuade me, but as I have frequently stressed, this is a public inquiry. The public need to see and hear for themselves that the issues relevant to Mr. McGrail's retirement have been identified and that they are being thoroughly examined and, where necessary, the various witnesses' accounts are challenged. So, as it seems to me, these two days give the parties another chance to put their case to the public. Uh, Mr. Santos, counsel to the inquiry, has presented the evidence, but he has no client, he has no case to present, still less does he have a case to answer, so it is unnecessary and indeed inappropriate for him to make detailed closing submissions. He and his junior, Miss Williams, have, if I may say so, with great skill and industry, drafted a detailed facts schedule, being a summary of the written and oral evidence extending to over 270 pages. That also will be, or perhaps already has been, uploaded onto the inquiry website. It is a valuable and indeed vital resource for me as I come to write the report and indeed for anyone else who wants to follow the fine detail of the evidence which we have heard. The plan today is to hear from four advocates, first from Mr. Cruz for the Royal Gibraltar Police, from Mr. Gibbs, King's Counsel for the retired Superintendent, Mr. Richardson, then for Mr. Niche, King's Counsel for the Gibraltar Police Authority, and for Mr. Cooper, King's Counsel for the former Operation Delhi Defendants. And tomorrow, Mr. Wagner, on behalf of uh, the retired Commissioner, Mr. McGrail, and then Sir Peter Caruana, KC, for the government parties.